We're looking at regression therapy, uh, whether it's regression in this lifetime, regression in past lives, uh, and if we do believe in past lives, we have to believe in uh, lives in between when we're making the transition. So we're looking at a timeline. Um, we have the future, when we have the past, and maybe somehow we're sandwiched in between, such as this presence, this nowness, this present moment. And so we can look at and, and, and think in terms of our memories of the past and the programming that we uh, have endured in the past, uh, maybe the past year, the past uh, several years as a young person, and all the way into uh, our birth, maybe when we're two and three years old. And we will uh, be going through a regression, I'll lead you through one, that will involve this lifetime. And then also we will be taking a look at past life regressions and what it means to go into past lives and how um, this can help us, uh, how we can use this as a healing modality and what it means. Um, we'll be talking about all of this and hopefully you will get a great deal out of it by actually having this experiential understanding and this, this experience of, of do, going through these regressions. Regression therapy uses a number of methods to draw back the veil between the, the separation between the conscious and the subconscious mind. The subconscious, really, it's the storehouse and organizer of, of all of our past memories, whether in this life or even in past lives. So when we're looking at past life memories, for example, or even memories of this life, they are seen as the autobiography of the subconscious. They're the personal stories that explain who you are and why you're on this earth and why you do what you do. And the person does not need to be spiritual. They don't need to be scientific. Um, they don't even necessarily need anything that uh, needs to be healed, but it does help to have an open mind about the possibilities of this modality. Regression therapy is a therapeutic technique for assessing and re-experiencing our past, and this can include one's past lives. It's a branch of hypnotherapy, a regression, a past life regression, or regression therapy, has really grown over the last 50 years. It's, it's an important addition to the healing arts. Regressions can take place in meditation and in dream work as well. And, and uh, I s often suggest that a person uh, have a nice little book next to them uh, in their, uh, next to their bedstand. So when they wake in the morning, that they jot down these dreams that they've had, especially if they, uh, even if they make sense or not, to jot down some key elements of their dreams and to journal and to look at these and use these, particularly after doing any kind of work with uh, regression work, past life regression particularly. Uh, because when we are sleeping, the subconscious has a way of, of allowing these things to bubble up for us. They might not make sense uh, readily, but um, they, they likely will make sense if we, if we journal them and use it as kind of a, a personal study uh, for ourselves and, and see what these, these dreams mean. So uh, not only through um, this work that we're talking about now, but regression therapy can be experienced through meditation and also through dreams. And that's why I suggest journaling your dreams. The benefits of regression therapy and past life regression are, are huge. So some people, they, they want to try past life regression uh, simply out of curiosity. They want to see who they were in the past, um, whether they were um, some king or queen or something, and, and uh, just kind of have fun with it. But for most, it's a path for personal growth and healing. Uh, it can help. It can, it can heal a person. The, and that's how I originally got into past life regression or regression work period is because I was primarily using meditation and mindfulness as a healing modality. There were certain people that wanted to be healed uh, from whatever they're working with, 
But I, for the life of me, I could not get them to do a meditation practice. It was just not in them, it's seemingly. And uh, in the past, I would just completely give up. Uh, but I, I thought, well, maybe there is something that we can do with these people. And that's when I started studying hypnotherapy, getting people, uh, hypnosis, getting people into a trance and then speaking with their subconscious. Um, it, it has a, a, a real coordinate, a correlation with uh, uh, meditation in that it's an intervention with the subconscious mind. So it's a very interesting modality and something that uh, I learn to use quite often. And sometimes I even use it interchangeably with uh, uh, meditation clients or students. And um, I will often integrate hypnotherapy in with their, um, with their sessions, if they're one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, regression therapy also allows us to energize talents and abilities uh, from the past. We, we often hear of and, and possibly meet people that are, uh, for some reason, just talented beyond um, their wildest dreams and without any training. Um, the uh, musicians, for example, I, I met uh, a, a person, I was playing guitar, and we got together and he sat down and he picked up a guitar and he started playing and I asked him how long he's been playing and he looked at me kind of like I was crazy and come to realize that he had never played but yet he was somehow able to pick up the guitar and he, and he was playing. One month later uh, we hired him to play in our band as a bass player. So he he never had any formal training, he never, he never needed it. Um, he was uh, uh, very much like a prodigy, where these young children know their craft and they they just start playing and whatever it might be doesn't it could be sports as well. So we understand why some people are musical, some people are artistic or uh, maybe linguistic. Some people have been known to speak other languages when in trance, for example. I've seen this done, and in. Regression uh, therapy also helps us release fears and anxieties linked to the past, such as life traumas. Well, why, are we, why do we have fears of heights, water, uh, certain types of people? So fears can be better understood and then seen as being false. So it can be very healing in that way. We can also release physical problems related to past traumas. The subconscious mind represses emotions for protection from overload. The subconscious mind is in control. The subconscious mind has a built-in mechanism to protect the conscious mind from information that uh, is just too much. Whether uh, it's, it, it's uh, uh, too much information or that it's too dramatic or, or too, um, uh, the subconscious might feel it's something that we are not prepared for. But this is not always healthy for us because repressed emotions are not good for the body. So once re released, we can learn from and let go of these repressed emotions because they're, they're, uh, they can be held within the body. And we also understand it and align with our true purpose in life. We understand what is behind a, our calling in life. Um, it's not uncommon for a person to drop everything they've been doing for, for years uh, to, to do what they feel is their purpose in life. And that can be understood through this kind of work. The discovery of why we have been put on this earth, for example. And also this regression uh, work removes one's fear of death. Death of being, death being more than just an idea or a learned concept. And perhaps most of all, uh, and we don't have to be spiritual or, or uh, be a Buddhist or a Hindu to understand this, but it helps with our relation in, to our, in our understanding of karma. Perhaps one of the biggest benefits of this regression work is that we can do this, that we can, we can learn from our mistakes. And this is why we have a population growth, perhaps, in the world. Uh, it's, it's as if uh, we have taken out a loan and paid off only the interest as a person. So we are here to occupy our desires uh, and not working hard enough on cleansing our past mistakes. Instead, we keep repeating them again and again, and so we have this rebirth again and again. 
And so we keep coming back to learn these lessons. And so the, the karmic uh, situation um, is, uh, I, you know, I, I feel it's real and, and understanding why we go through these lives. Uh, and most regression therapists will, will agree that it's not uncommon for us to go through an entire life, 60 some years, to learn one lesson. And, and if we think of in terms of what that one lesson might be this time around, for example, what is it? What are we here to learn? What are we meant to, to uh, educate ourselves about this time around? We, we might feel like, well, this is it. I'm going to be done. But we might be surprised. Um, so look for those lessons and learn from these lessons. It's, it's very, uh, I think it's very, very important that we, that we look at it in this, this way. This regression work is very healing. So you are, not, you are not born as a blank slate, but with both wisdom and scars from many lifetimes and from many situations. So we all carry memories from past, and whether it's past lives or from, from this life, uh, but we bring them these unconscious memories and, that carry an energetic charge, and they continue to affect us. It can be things left undone, it could be vows made, uh, accomplishments that we've tried to achieve, failures, mistakes, successes, emotional debts, guilt, um, might be some kind of trauma or, or even a sudden death, um, maybe wisdom or uh, lost love or the love that we had in the past life is enough to bring us back in, into this, this lifetime looking for that same kind of love. There's, the, the possibilities are endless when we, when we think about them. So these charges from the past set up patterns that are continually triggered and then repeated in, in our, our present lifetime, in, our, in these present moments. So these patterns can be positive or they can be negative. They can affect our relationships, be our behaviors, our motivations, and actually even our, our physical bodies and our health. Positive patterns can feed talents, though. So be, they can bestow wisdom, influence tastes, and energize our life's purpose, as we spoke of. Negative patterns unfortunately can fuel compulsive, destructive behavior. They can cloud our judgment, they can actually cause injury and block our way. And so by, by making these memories conscious, by bringing them up, we can release the patterns that no longer serve us. If, and they can, this can free us to live more fully in this present moment. Um, these beneficial patterns are reinforced and negative patterns are completely neutralized. So past life regression is the process of the healing the now by healing the past. And so the next question is, how does past life regression work? The practices that are really a part of, of the, the following videos that um, I will um, link to uh, underneath this video they are really about what you might like to find out about you. you. You think about what you might like to learn about yourself. So you want to really look for these messages, and they might be very subtle, but don't discard anything. So we'll be using visualization. Visualization is not seeing with the eyes, but with the mind. So while we're in a, uh, in a light trance, you can experience past life events through this, um, this sensory experience. Sensory experience. Um, I like to call it, instead of just visualization, a sensualization, which is not a word, so don't try to look it up. But it's, it's, it's feeling, it's, it's um, being able to really touch something like the bark on a tree. It's, it's hearing sounds like um, you know, gunshots, you know, something, some of these things that we experience. And um, so you might experience the memory like a vivid movie, or you might see only vague flashes of imagery, for example, that they, they might prompt some kind of a narrative. And you might actually, as I said, you might hear gunshots or explosions, um, you know, if you would be on a battlefield. Um, 
You might hear different types of music. And it's also possible to recall smells. Uh, if you can smell leather or smoke from a fire, these kinds of things. So as the story unfolds, you feel real emotions. And the more you feel, the better. Uh, it's a, they're, they're appropriate to the story. Uh, you might cry, and this is v actually very common. Um, the people that come to see me and do regression work, um, probably, I don't know, seven out of ten of them, will have tears coming down their eyes. Their eyes are closed and they'll be, they'll be crying. Um, and this quickly fades. There's, so there's a, there can be deep experiences of sadness, you know, at the, perhaps at the, uh, at the death of a beloved child. Um, we might feel despair in the, uh, in the body as we witness a, a massacre or um, maybe, uh, you know, elation from a long-awaited homecoming from war to see loved ones. And just as you can recall strong emotions, you might have the, this, this pain of an arrow piercing your body or the, or the heaviness you know, of a backpack that you're carrying on your back. So these physical sensations and emotions, they're, they're real and they're in the moment, but they pass very, very quickly as you move through this, through this past story. And there are many situations um, in the area of death as well, because oftentimes the, the regression will take you to the most significant time of your life. And the most significant time of a person's life is often their death. This isn't always true. If there's a sudden death, um, it, 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 not, sometimes it won't show up as a death, but more, more of a blackness. Um, and, but if it's a pleasant death or something that's long um, and um, unpleasant, unfortunately, uh, we can feel that. But as, as I mentioned, it can, it can pass quite, quite quickly uh, for, um, uh, for us. And so any kind of emotions are uh, they, they'll go by very quickly. So visualizing and sensualizing uh, is a big part of what we do in, in um, this type of practice and this type of uh, modality. So the more visual or the more you are able to work with images, the, the clearer you will recognize any kind of any image, images. And, and the same is true with sounds and tastes and feel and, and these emotions. So the, the primary thing that we're looking at is um, getting very relaxed. And that's why it's a, it can have a direct relation to... Uh, meditation. We want to get very, very relaxed and there's, it's necessary to get into a very light trance, not a deep trance, because if I was working with somebody individually, I would have them in a cha comfortable chair, I would relax them by doing some kind of a, a body scan, and I'll, I'll do that in one of the, uh, one of the videos that you, will, that you can find that's related to this one. And the person gets into a light trance, and actually, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I would be asking them a question, and then they'd re be reporting back to me. That's mm -hmm. how the, the individual sessions work. I would uh, ask somebody, what are you wearing? What do you see? Questions like this. How do you feel? Um, is it somebody you know? Are there any buildings? Um, is there any indication of what country you're in? What uh, are you in nature? Are you indoors? All these questions, but um, you, the client, would be responding to these questions and I would be writing down the response. And then after the initial session, we would be talking about the regression work. So it's very interesting. Um, the, when we get a chance to do it one-on-one, -on -one, it's also very interesting and you can get a very good taste of what this work is like uh, and, and just having me and allowing me to guide you through a couple of different practices. One of them, as I mentioned, will be regressing in this life, and then there will be a regression into uh, past lives as well.